let me once again say a big thank you from parisarasha and from uh, women's movement that you accepted our invite and ram sir is also here ram sir would you like I to agree. say hello to sir yeah good I'm evening it is always a pleasure good meeting you and good evening mr Sarishi. maheshwari good evening aarti good, good evening good evening it's a pleasure to hear mr hirnani whenever i hear happen to have a chance to hear him and he's always so humble so inclusive it's, it's a great uh, motivation for all of us yeah so the entire idea was uh, as i was explaining you over the phone that uh, because we have seen there's lot of fear factor in the society at large because people are losing their lives their jobs uh, so there is actually you know like we don't see any bright hope of ray you know so that's where we thought we can bring in you know the energy and the experiences of all these stalwarts all different leaders from different fields who can come who can give that hope ki okay life is much more you know there will be lot of challenges like i always say aaj corona hai aur kal ko aur koi dusra rona hoga so we have to face these challenges and we have to emerge like a winner so there are lot of uh, different qualities what a leader should have and i'm sure you have all these qualities and today maybe you can you know like help our people our uh, leaders uh, who are joining us uh, in between also they will join and this will be always there forever on the youtube channel so we request you and before that yeah sir has uh, iranandani sir has told me not to give a long introduction of his but uh, i am sure he doesn't need any introduction his name is uh, you know naam hi kafi hai because hiranandani once you take that name hiranandani itself is self self explanatory but uh, he is the man who actually changed mumbai skylines so when you think of hiranandani we always think of you know a big huge giant uh, group of uh, you know uh, amazing uh, lifestyle you can say so here is a, a short brief about sir uh, so i'm not going to get into you know your degrees or anything but i would like to talk about uh, he has a doctorate in philosophy is in housing revolution in india challenges and prospects so i'm just highlighting few key points which i felt is very important for people to know because we all know him as okay he is mr b hiranandani but uh, you know this is something which everybody will be interested to know he is a co-founder and managing director of hiranandani group of companies he also heads a distinct business unit hiranandani communities he is also known as builder extraordinary and as the man responsible for changing the skyline of mumbai as i said with the delivery of landmark project hiranandani gardens pavai the hiranandani group is a concept of developing mixed use integrated model with vibrant community living its reason for of existence so um, and very important thing is uh, from being a forbes listed top indian rich real estate developer to co-founder of india's top real estate company there is much more to add to his profile the philanthropist profile unveils his social commitment as a responsible citizen of the nation he is trustee of 14 colleges and six schools under hyderabad sin national college hsnc board and runs vocational skill development centers and provost of hn uh, hsnc university mumbai he is also trustee for two hospitals and three temples as part of his charity initiatives and sincerity and commitment and consistent efforts is the recipe to achieve success and scale great heights is the quote which very aptly sums up dr niranjan hiranandani's magic mantra so sir we are all in for your magic mantra for today and over to you now very good evening to you arti sawar and mr ram maheshwari and uh, maya shani if she's there uh, very good evening and thank you very much for inviting me here this amongst uh, the teachers among the leaders who are there and i look upon you as uh, and in our indian tradition we always had the teacher as a guru as somehow or the other that aspect of it may have got lost over a period of years as the british took over 
when we got straight jacketed in terms of teaching learning processes. But that's not how teaching and learning was in the good old days when India was leadership in teaching learning for over 1500 years. Of course, that is 400 years before the British came to India. And that was the kind of leadership which uh, India had in terms of the education process. So people from all over Asia came long distances in order to study in Nalanda, to study under the gurus in the country and be able to pick up a lot of subjects which otherwise was unknown to the rest of the world. So that is the kind of leadership which India had and we lost it out somewhere where now the leadership is transferred to the Western countries. And over a period of years, I do hope that uh, we get it back again. In the last 35 years, we have lots of policies in the country. We have had industrial policies. We had uh, uh, various policies in terms of uh, finance, in terms of economic uh, changes that have taken place in, uh, in the country. But education policy to revamp took 35 years. And lo and behold, Mr. Narendra Modi decided to unleash it during the pandemic year of 2020. And that is something which we all look forward to because the change has become imperative. The entire world in terms of teaching learning has changed. And the amount of information that we taught in the good old years is actually disappeared because most of it is now available at the fingertips on our laptop, iPad, or even the mobile. So why would I want to actually imbibe and learn and memorize a lot of information which is otherwise so easily available and there? Is that all that our teaching and learning will give us? So that is a major change which our national education policy is thinking of and planning to do. And we, under the education system, require to imbibe these wonderful changes. However, uh, a lot of it depends on the way we change these ideas. Because most of these changes will mean what? It will mean that the students who are now your learners will ultimately go into business and industry. And when they go there, they're going to be asked not only what content or information that you have learned, but also the skill sets that they need in order to get the job. And most of the employers now find that our teaching and learning process is devoid of teaching them all these skills which are required to be run by industry. So one of the major changes is that the teacher has to actually change in a great deal, not only to pass on content of information of the subject to the student, but also ask them lots of questions in order to make them introspect as to what has been done. Over a period of years, if you ask me a question and I'm looking back at my school years, uh, I do remember a couple of teachers and I want to relate to two of them in order to make my point. The one teacher that I had was an English teacher, uh, a diminutive Miss Mersban who stayed at Kushru Bagh, a Parsi spinster, and she taught us English. We were in Campion School, I was in Campion School along with the other students, and we prided ourselves to be able to be strong in English because that is what Campion School was very proud of. However, this English teacher one day gets up in the class after hearing a couple of students speak. She stood up in anger and said, none of you know how to speak good English. And we all were struck because we never ever thought that anybody would tell us, students of Campion School, uh, how to speak English. And she actually marched out of the class and went and met the principal and told him that my students of Standard 5 are incapable of speaking good English and I'm going to suspend my English language classes and I'm going to teach them how to speak English 
the phonetics of English speaking. That was certainly not in the syllabus, but this teacher changed the entire thing. And for four weeks, two classes or three classes a week, she taught us how to speak English, how to speak correct English and how to pronounce good English. So she taught me a difference between a V and a who, W. All these things were so strange to us, even though we spoke good English. And this lady was so passionate about it. And after that year passed by, I never had a problem of pronunciation of good English because the basic pronunciation she taught us something which was not in the syllabus holds me in good stead even today. Unfortunately, no school, no school teaches us how to pronounce good English, which means what? That yes, of course, she covered the syllabus before the end of the year, but she added on something which holds me good stead in terms of skill for the rest of my life. And it is as simple as speaking good English. I want to give you a second story about my school experience. I was in the eighth or ninth standard school and I was walking on one of the uh, uh, passages and suddenly somebody boxed me very hard in the back, really hard. And I turned around in great pain, screaming almost. And whom do I see? Mr. Hodiwala, my PT master, instructor of Campion School. And he said, Niranjan, you're a tall boy. How can you stoop and walk like that? Stand up erect and put your shoulders back and walk. And since then, I have always walked with my shoulders back. This is something which a PT teacher never needed to do but it taught me how to stand erect and walk. This is the difference between a teacher and a teacher because a teacher looks at much more than the content of his or her subject and makes extraordinary efforts to see that a student actually moves to the next stage in their life and something which is a skill or some idea or thoughts which will hold them in good stead for the rest of their lives. So important to understand what makes a not a good teacher or an excellent teacher, but a great teacher. Because though both the teachers were not teachers which actually taught me in the final year which became my board exams and extremely important to it, but created a position which made the world. I don't, you can't possibly box any student in this day and time, uh, the way it was done at that point of time. Uh, so I'm not recommending it. In fact, I'm warning you, please don't do it because the parents will go and file an FIR against you. But I was just giving you an example of how teachers have moved out of the way in order to make the teaching work out with a difference, not only in the subjects, but make it quite difficult. Today's teaching is done in order to coach a student to pass the examinations. Nothing wrong with that. We all want our students to pass the examinations and we want them to score well in the examination and all the other differences that make it happen. But the issue is, will the student then, after passing the examination and learning to vomit out the content that you have taught, be able to move on in life and really to do it? The answer is no, because what you really need to teach the student is to continue to learn and to have a learning process which is lifelong. Some of the areas in which people are skilled and taught become easy to continue to get lifelong skills. For example, I'm a chartered accountant by qualification and the Institute of Chartered Accountants requires me to attend certain number of classes every year 
if I want to hold a certificate of practice. This is not so in other professions and other ideas. And so an individual who actually passes college and school needs to actually upgrade themselves all the time. And it's extremely important to teach the students not only to learn, but to continuously learn and improve themselves all their life life. And this is also what the principals have to do, what your teachers of subjects have to do, and all the improvements that you need to do. The other thing which I have found over a period of time is to teach people how not to be competitive. I know this sounds funny, uh, because in reality, we are all about standing first in our institution, getting the first class, getting 90% of the whole thing. So what happens about students who do not do well, competitively speaking, whether they stand in the second class or whether they are in the whole system of this thing? One of the things which I think becomes important in the teaching learning process in is order to teach them is to give them a lifetime thought that they must improve one step at a time, improve themselves every single day, or to see to it that you make 1% improvement every day of your life. And I'll give you several examples of how one does it. Let's say I want to make lectures, and I've done a lecture in a school, one year ago. The next lecture which I've given one, two weeks later than that, it is my attempt that the lecture I've given after that should be at least 1% better than the earlier lecture. And the third lecture that I give should be 1% better than the second lecture and so on and so forth. Hence, at the end of the year, we become much better. I use this idea very lucratively in my real estate business. I tell the, uh, the engineers, the architects, the planners, and all that, that every building that I make must be an improvement of my previous building. I don't say that my building should be better than Mr. Loda's building, or Mr. Raheja's building, or XYZ's building. I don't tell them that. What do I tell them? I tell them, that what Niranjan Hiranandani made yesterday in terms of a building, the next one building that we make must be better than the previous building. Yes, we must do continuous improvement, but it has to be indoctrinated at the time when you are in school or indoctrinated in the time when you are in college, not at the time when you are into profession or business or otherwise. Not and, and this can improvement can happen any time in life. I'll give you a story on that. Age 48, Niranjit Hiranandan. I was a workaholic doing my business. And uh, uh, right from age 26, 27, after I graduated from my chartered accountancy, I was a teacher for two years. And then uh, I worked on and started my business in textiles and then into real estate and then closed down the textile business and went on uh, to continue to uh, do my work in the real estate business. And on a continuing basis, uh, made a growth path which meant that I would continue to improve myself in terms of every possible way. So if you look at the buildings which I made 35 years ago, so and the kind the of buildings that I need today is a huge time. world of the one that I didn't talk. Yeah. So it is a world of a difference between what I could possibly do there. So many times when people ask me, Niranjan, who is your best competitor or your next competitor? And I said, it is the Niranjan Hiranandani of yesterday, or the previous building, or my previous lecture, or my previous work that I have done, or in any sort of that. What does that actually do? It picks up the student who is the weakest in your class, or the strongest in your class, or the person who has handicap, or the person who is the most brilliant, 
not to worry about being first after remaining first, but how to improve himself or herself. And those who are at the bottom of the class also encourage them, can I make a little improvement of the thing? So the thing which a teacher or a principal or anyone must indicate to the child or the student or the student of college or any other thing is who has made the maximum improvement in this week, in this month, in this test or whatever. Not only who has stood first and those who have failed, but who have made the maximum improvement. You did X way last month when you attended the max test. How much have you improved? If a student has got 100 on 100, he or she cannot improve. Okay, fair enough. But the student who has got 50 and does 60 in the next examination has certainly improved. And that doesn't matter which area it is, whether it is languages, art, science, engineering, commerce, chartered accountancy, it's irrelevant. So the benchmark is to see how we can make improve. And that is the secret, not only of teaching learning, but also parenting. Because different children, different children have different skill sets of whatever it is. Different skill sets in terms of capability, different skill sets in terms of background, and different skill sets in terms of mind and body. This is extremely important. One more thing which I was telling you, but somehow that slipped, was uh, when I was 48 years old and uh, I, was, uh, I went back to my alma mater and there was a, a race, an athletic race, for old boys at 48, now I'm 71. So at 48, I was an old boys race in camping school and they made us run 20 meters, 20 meters because we were old. And when I finished 20 meters, I was panting. At that day, I realized that I was not taking care of my health. And I got a shock of my life. I said, oh my God, if at 48, that is my condition, What's going to happen when I'm 60? Now I'm 71, but I, at that time I thought, what's going to happen to me? I'm sure I'll get a heart attack and die. Uh, so I have to be very cautious. However, over a period of time, I joined the gym. I started doing yoga. I started getting into exercise. I also got into a little bit of diet and all these things I did. Now let me fast forward to age 69. because the last two years have been pandemic, so it's difficult to say. I go to the gym three days a week, two days a week I do yoga, and one day a week I try to run five kilometers at PDP Park at Napier Zero. So over a period of time, I've been able to do easily twice a year, the 10 kilometers in a marathon very comfortably. So age 48, I am running 20 meters with difficulty, at age 69, I run comfortably 10 kilometers at a time. What does it mean? It means at any age and time, you can actually improve. So many of the teachers say that I can't improve. You know, I, I'm already 48. I've been teaching for so many years. I've been teaching for 25 years, 22 years. And now what do you want us to continuously improve? That's not correct. We can always improve, we can pick up new systems by which to teach and learn, a new system by which we can operate. All these things are things which are really going to make a world of a difference. As a leader, one of the other things I found very useful, and why am I sharing this with you? Because I belong to various organizations. In the HSNC board, we have 14 colleges, six schools, we have uh, 14 principals of colleges, uh, six principals of uh, schools. Uh, we have more than 2,500 teachers and non-teaching staff within the organization. And uh, you can't uh, control everybody. And certainly not at the board level. It's impossible. So how do we actually do it? We delegate a lot of authority to the principals, to the head of departments, to the subjects, uh, to our entire institution, 
a lot of delegation of authority is given. And of course, we monitor them not by making one compete with the other, because some of the colleges are iconic colleges and they stand out and even schools, they're iconic. But we don't bother about that, but we do monitor the fact how much better are the results this year as compared to last year. So a school may be doing very, very well this year, but doesn't make improvement. And another college or school is doing not so well, but has done substantial improvement. So we monitor that very carefully because that's the only way that we really come to know how we can do substantial improvement in our thing. One of the things I have really found is that people talk about work as, I, think, uh, I like my work. And uh, many times when I talk to these people, I realize that they're actually doing their work to get the salary. They're actually not passionate about it or desirable about it. And that makes for a weak teacher, a weak principal, a weak trustee, a weak head of the department, a weak person. The persons who actually do very well, it doesn't matter what the job is. It could be a lab technician or it could be a teacher, it could be a head of the department, it could be the principal, the vice principal. Those who are passionate and love their work will always do well. The rest may do well, but that well is okay. But the ones who actually do well and make a difference to themselves and to the others around them are those who are passionate about what they want to do. If you are passionate about it, what do you say? I love my work. I don't like my work. And there's lots of things that I could share with you, but I'd rather have question answers between ourselves and rather to do that. But before that, I'm gonna share one thing which I heard. Dada J.P. Vaswani, who's no more, he died a couple of years at, at the right age of 99. And I remember one of his birthdays I attended in Pune, uh, maybe when he was 93, 94, I can't recall exactly. And uh, when I went over there and I was hearing his speech, uh, he said something which actually shook me up. And he said, uh, many people say they're doing their best, but that is not good enough. Because a lot of people do their best and they say, oh, I did my best, but I couldn't succeed. What you really have to do in everything that you do you have to do better than the best. And that is when I realized, and it has occurred to me much later in life, that what he really wanted to say was that you have to exert yourself to do that one plus. Take that extra step, be extra passionate. Do that extra thing that you need to do in order to do, prepare yourself for whatever you are. And when you make that little difference in terms of what you're doing, you are doing better than the best. And when you do better than the best every single day on every activity that you do, even if you have to love somebody, love somebody better than the best. And it doesn't mean only your children. It could be your spouse. It could be anybody else also. But it should be better than the best. And unless you don't get into a habit of doing better than the best for everything that you do, or improving 1% every single day of your life, there will never be a great person. And age is not only a number. Let me give you a last example. Captain Nair of the Leela Hotel. He founded Leela Hotels at age 62. He built seven hotels of the finest hotels in the world and created the Leela chain. Age 62, died at age 92 made five, seven best hotels in the world. Each one of them is so beautiful. If you look at it from inside or outside, it's fantastic. He never had to do and give a brand of Grand Hyatt or whatever it is. His wife's name was Leela and Leela became the Leela hotel chain. So even at 60, 
Two, this man leaped into the new frontiers of doing it. He improved himself. He improved better than the best of hotels in the country. And that is what the Leela chain is all about. You have to go and see the hotel in Bangalore or in Delhi or in Goa of the Leela Hotel. There are fine pieces of architecture and interiors which are second to none in the world. So you can quite imagine. So age is but a number. And your effort in order to be what Dada Vaswani says, better than the best, can be achieved by you by just taking one good new step, better step every single day of your life. And that is how leadership is all about, of your, including everybody and encouraging each one of your teachers, each one of your people under you, around you, whether students or teachers or non-teaching people, look after them. And I'm certain that you will have a leadership value that people will remember even after you're not there. So I wish you all the best and looking forward to your question or questions and I hope I'll be able to answer at least some of them. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity of sharing some thoughts with you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was really inspiring. And I actually am taking really uh, keywords from here, better than the best and age is just a number. And of course, comparison, competition with our own selves is something every leader has to keep on doing every day, every minute. So before we open the forum for question answers, I'm sure every participant is eagerly waiting for you, you know, like with your interaction. But here's some, you know, like we are also being very selfish because, uh, you know, uh, we would like uh, you to see what Parisarasha as an entity, you know, for past 40 years we have been doing. So it's a small video presentation of Parisarasha for yourself because otherwise I don't know when we will get an opportunity to meet you face to face. So here's uh, Sukhada, can you please play the video and then later on we will have open Look discussion. forward, look forward yeah. to see it. Yes, yes. natural qualities. We have all experienced these qualities when we were young. But as we grow up, we forget our natural qualities. Rather, we are forced to forget. Can we dream of a learning system where our natural qualities are encouraged for future sustainability of the individual and also our planet? Parisarasha is glorious dream to change the education system to provide joyful learning for a sustainable future through the environment for the environment. Gloria D'Souza, a school teacher, created revolution in the history of Indian education with her not-for-profit registered trust, Parisar Asha. Gloria was the first Ashoka Fellow and has been awarded with international recognition as a social entrepreneur. Today, Parisar Asha is spearheaded by Ms. Aarti Savoor with a team of professionals from various national and international backgrounds. Parisar Asha is supporting public and private schools to provide affordable, joyful education at par with global standards. Government says right to education. We believe at Parisar Asha right to right education. To support our educational institutions to provide quality education and also creative education, Parisar Asha has various unique programs. One of the signature program is Ecotech World School program because what we believe that today the need is to be eco, 
eco is not only your environment but it can be also your economy and tech is a technique to live life ecotech world school program is a wholesome program to empower schools to address the challenges of 21st century educational needs while maintaining the fundamentals and identity of the school intact through its unique pedagogy of easeol environmental studies approach towards learning this comprehensive program provides global curriculum suitable for state board and cbse syllabus for nursery to standard 7 detailed lesson plan guidelines digital and traditional teaching aids virtual classrooms worksheets and workbooks assessment and evaluations teachers training to develop academic skills as well as soft skills and parents orientation in a nutshell a complete support system to create tomorrow's successful positive global citizens environment school teacher and parent these are very important factors in the child's learning process to complete this chain and to address parental issues parisar asha has launched a free helpline number It gives me great pleasure to be here at this global symposium on soul and education organized by Parisar Asha which is taking government's initiative of right to education a step further by promoting right to right education education system ko thoda sudhare thoda creative hi banaye jaisi aapki thinking hai तो मैं बड़ी खुश हो जाऊंगी क्योंकि आई एम अ पेरेंट टुडे सो थैंक यू सुकर एंड थैंक यू सर फॉर वाचिंग आवर वीडियो so this is what we have been doing for past 40 years helping underprivileged schools lower income group schools to provide quality education joyful education for lifelong learning and sustainability so now here is uh, uh, you know on behalf of uh, parisar asha and uh, women's movement i really you know like thank you and now the forum is open for all the participants you can have conversation dialogue question answer sessions with sir uh sukada can you give uh, uh, permission to everyone to unmute themselves yes it's done yeah so you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask the questions so can i ask one question to you my first question because i belong to this uh, philanthropical uh, you know sector uh, especially though it's an education but we are an ngo so what kind of advice you would like to give the leaders of this uh, philanthropical section because everybody is going through a bad phase during this uh, corona time you know because funding is a major problem for all the organizations so uh, what kind of uh, strategies or suggestions if you can because since you are associated with so many philanthropical organizations also so what kind of guidance you can give because i can see in our uh, you know audience also there are many a uh, leaders who are from ngo sector uh, who have joined us so any particular uh, uh, suggestion uh i uh, think the issue is very simple whenever there is a pandemic whenever there is a, a downturn of the economy the way it is done happened today we all are getting suffered whether it is parents grandparents teachers their relatives their people and all that so we all go through a crisis uh, and it is uh, not only about uh, uh, your institution not getting funds but there are so many parents of uh, students who are out of jobs uh, there are people who don't have anything their their, their business is totally disrupted Uh, people who worked in the hospitality restaurant and other trades have been uh, uh, i i know a person who's got 80% cut in salary now what does he do you know i mean these are the kind of situations that we are all going to do it so we have to ride the wave at this point of time and see how we can best do uh, by lending a year lending a, a little help to the extent that we can 
and uh, continue to ride low in terms of operational cost, but continue to deliver service. What is more important is not uh, the money which actually is required for the purpose of doing it, but there are so many things that one can do. For example, I mean, uh, 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 let's say, for example, the hospital needs plasma uh, for this thing. You, you actually get together people and conduct programs by which those who have already got COVID just has to donate the blood for giving plasma. Uh, if, if there are institutions where teaching is not possible, uh, we could... Uh, for example, if you want, uh, we can take up our colleges or our schools and our teachers can actually become mentor teachers. And if you don't have teachers in these uh, institutions, I can make any of my schools and colleges mentor, uh, teach, uh, mentor schools and uh, mentor colleges and teach uh, some of the lectures through teachers who are very good in these colleges and schools free of charge. I mean, uh, we could do that for the for the mentally uh, institutions. So when we want to actually do service, uh, there are so many things that can be done. I mean, it's an amazing uh, lot to do. Uh, and uh, money, is not, money is important, of course, it's a medium, but money is not the only thing that works. So for instance, I know some people who have helped in getting network of ambulances, you know, they network and see that they have a helpline and get ambulances and push people to do it. So these are small things which can happen. But if you want to do service, there is always a possibility, but you may not be able to do it with the same amount of money or to the same extent that you were doing before. But you ride the wave during this time. And if you continue to serve people, it comes back to you with a bigger bang than whatever it is. So uh, let me give you an example of my hospital. Uh, we had run a hospital with 240 beds, but because we're looking after COVID patients, we have increased the beds by 70. But we have put three beds in one room where there were two and one. We have put three beds and all that stuff just to accommodate a lot of people. So we admitted somebody and he said, I have never been in a single bed, uh, uh, you know, in, in any hospital up to now. So Mr. Hiranandani, you either give me this, otherwise I'm shifting to another hospital. I said, I'm sorry, you can please shift to another hospital as well. He went to another hospital and came back after two days over there for continued treatment because we gave the best treatment to every patient This was there. Uh, we just bought an oxygen generating machine. You know, I, uh, this thing in order to see that if tomorrow there's a third wave, we should have our self-sufficiency in oxygen. We are upgrading that. So there are always things that there are people who are ready to give money. You know, money, money does come. But uh, obviously, at this time like this, you can't spend too much, but you can do a lot different service than what you used to do before. As long as you're continuing to serve people, there's a value proposition there for you. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really wonderful explanation. And I think that will really give that hope and, uh, you know, boost to so many leaders who are over here, uh, join over here. Yeah, so now anybody else, you can uh, ask the question. Yeah, Ram sir is raising hands. <laughs> sir, you can unmute yourself. Uh, Sukada, can you please unmute Ram sir? I think Dr. Suresh Tire can speak in between yeah, before. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Sir, very good evening. Good evening, Nirajan, uh, uh, sir. Uh, it's, it was a uh, very marvelous and a very inspiring speech. And as uh, Ms. Uh, Ardi said, all the qualities of a leader are seen in you. And it's very nice to hear you after a long gap of 15 years. I was working for KC College for almost 18 and a half years, where I have met you many times in many of the programs. Now, I am the principal of Vivek Vidyalaya and Junior College of Aragao. So thank you for a wonderful uh, session today. You must come and meet me sometime again. Definitely, like sir. Like hear about how you are doing in your college and what's happening. De definitely, sir. I have made, I have got many uh, inspirations from you and uh, particularly your father. I still remember Dr. L.H. Hiranandani. 
and uh, he used to come for many of the programs in kc college and uh, miss manju nichani uh, of course i have been appointed uh, by principal kam kunnan uh, sir definitely i have got so many uh, i mean qualities i mean the things from uh, exposure from kc college and i became the principal over here directly uh, and i i also have used many of the uh, things which i have got it from there sir i will definitely come and meet you sir later on. please do please do thank, thank you. you thank you sir. thank you sir. Yeah. yeah no i'm sorry yeah <laughs> no i'm taking this opportunity can you hear me yes yeah i'm taking this opportunity because you are there you're one of the leaders not only in construction but also in education india um, has done well in education comparatively but i think there's there's much more to be done you know one of the things we have had a handicap in most of the time when i grew up i did my college i did my mba or whatever the people who used to go in education were the people who didn't get any better job you know primarily one of the reasons because one is a passion for education but apart from passion one has to be practical the salary scales in teaching industry were very low till very recently because the government has done quite a bit on and since you are one of the leaders in education as well now i do remember some of your principals the fantastic leaders i remember mr shiv dasani you know of uh, jain uh, sorry he was in jain he is also not directly under hsnc but uh, you know connected uh, with you so so what i was going to come to was that at your position and at your level you you are doing i'm sure but you should be able to influence the government to make teaching a attractive much more attractive as a career so that you get more and more talent it's not only about money it's about quality you know today we have institutions like iim ahmedabad we have good iits where you, you one can attract very good talent but on the whole still the country needs much more attraction into the education field and sir you will agree that uh, a principal a headmaster a principal a teacher can influence so many lives so many lives at at the impressionable level of a junior school and also higher school college so sir i would urge you because you are capable of doing it to approach the prime minister or whoever is concerned to make education career more attractive in this country like it is in most country germany teachers get the, are the best paid uh, people you know sorry my question was a little long but i wanted to impress this fact because you are present so the so ram you are absolutely correct and unfortunately many of the fields like uh, education is very lowly paid comparatively speaking though i agree with you that uh, recently the pay increases which have been there have been better than the others but look at the, uh, the idiosyncrasy that we have in the education field uh, a student will crib paying 10000 rupees for college education uh but when he will go to a coaching class he will pay or a, a, a student's a, a private coaching he'll pay a lakh of rupees in order to take a particular subject under a particular teacher and be able to do it so obviously uh, the very fact that coaching classes have grown all over india and i am making so much money out of the whole thing itself indicates that there is something which is wrong with the education process Absolutely. where a student really underpays in the colleges but overpays into private coaching and we need to do it so all this has to change the national education policy actually seeks to move in that direction but ultimately the state government also do it fortunately for us dr mashilkar has been appointed on behalf of the state government and i am part of that committee for the purposes of influencing the state policy of uh, education which will come up Uh, by the state government and doing it under Mr. Dr. Mashilka's leadership, so we hope that this aspect, this is one of the aspects, of course, uh, out of many that we have talked about, where we have said 
that uh, this type of dichotomy should not exist in the education field. And we have to merge it into one thing so that people come to college to get education, not go to coaching classes in order to get the education policy. So that's one part of it. The second part of it is the fact that uh, a government actually, unfortunately, wants to control it beyond the point. Uh, what it needs to do is to unleash some of this education part of it and allow the private sector also to actually do much more and keep it open for competition, similar to what you've done in many fields, like, for example, hospitals, for example. You have the government hospitals, you have the pr private hospitals, which are separate. And with the competition taking place, you have allowed the private hospitals to also grow and the systems also to work, whether charitable or otherwise. So similarly, we need to do much more into the education side. And hopefully, with the new education policy coming, they will unleash it. But government doesn't leave control so easily. So uh, the bureaucrats and the polity want to hold control, similar to what they have done in the case of vaccine, similar to what they have done in terms of gas and other policies. There's too much over control by the government in these fields. And hopefully they will unleash education in a bigger way so that uh, more institutions of excellence can be done. Teachers can be better paid uh, over a period of time. Definitely it will happen. And hopefully uh, India becomes the leader of education in the world once again. Yes. You know, uh, today, uh, why do we need to send our children to America for getting the ed education and stuff to it? So we need to make those changes happen and create that part of it where we bring back the glory of education and of course paying the uh, teachers well also, both the things together. Yes, thank you. Thank That's you. nice to hear. And maybe may I ask uh, my question? Maybe just, just one more comment, please. And maybe HSNC University, which is now private universities are coming up, NMIMS, HSNC, they can pave the way by attracting the best talent wherever they are, you know. And one of the things you'll have to do is to probably, I'm sure you are paying well, but maybe increase the orbit, you know. Yeah, but the... this will not happen overnight. Uh, yeah. uh, we have to do it. At, it'll happen over a period of time uh, yeah. and certainly won't happen overnight in one day. So we are going to work towards it. And that's the ultimate objective in order to see that uh, the teachers are well paid. We should be able to open. And at the same time, take care of students who can't afford with Absolutely. adequate scholarships. So Absolutely. increase the fees, but also provide for scholarships and also increase what we have to pay in terms of attracting the best talent. Absolutely. It's a combination of events, which over a period of time will happen. Will happen. Thank you. Yes. I think Mr. Kenneth D'Souza. Good evening, sir. And it was really a pleasure to listen to you. I have been uh, seeing your wonderful buildings in Mumbai, especially in the Pawai area and the Thani area. And it was such a great opportunity to see you and hear you in person. Uh, I'll start with one comment which uh, really resonated with me was the idea of continuous improvement. And, you know, I've just crossed into 60 and every day I wake up thinking how I'm going to improve. And I really like that you, uh, you know, stressed on that idea of continuous improvement, which is really valuable for your personal life and for your, you know, professional life. So uh, I really like that idea. On a, uh, a question, uh, I'd just like to, it's more on a personal side, sir, uh, that how do you manage your time and with so many organizations and still be an effective leader uh, in, in everything that you do and, you know, look for excellence in all these organizations. So just a short key mantra or a short, uh, you know, uh, you know, inner secret about how you do it. My secret is to uh, meet good people. My people is to surround myself with people who are more knowledgeable than I am. Uh, the secret is to uh, find the better and better people with you and uh, collate more with the better ones than the ones who don't do it. Sideline the people who are not so effective uh, and uh, outshine the student people, teachers, leaders who are doing a good job. And you have plenty of them. So the idea is uh, surround yourself with better and better people all the time. Keep learning from people who are your mentors. Uh, keep on learning from even the junior most of the persons. You'll be surprised how 
uh, people on the, uh, you know, example for the construction side, sometimes there's some problem with the senior most engineer is not able to side. I said, let's go to the site and, you know, you take the junior lab technician and the supervisors on the site. And he says, oh, we can't do this. We have to make a new road in order to get this material. And this fellow, you said, standing on the site and he's hearing. Uh, so I, uh, he could say, Saab, I kuch bolu? I bolo, ha, bolo. Uh, udar hum, uh, ye baju piche ke baag se hum kar sakte hain. Aur ye karenge to khali 25 foot ka distance pe tum road proper water mount bana denge to aapko karega yahan karne mein humne ko 3 4 6 mahine lag jayenge to aap kyun nahi kar dete so a senior most engineers are not able to answer where well, some junior guy on the site is able to do it so learn from everybody because there are people on the ground who will have their ear to the ground which is much more useful to them i had a problem today I went, uh, I, I got myself my second vaccine at the hospital and uh, we are buying a oxygen generating plant, a PSA plant, which we are going to erect on the top of the present oxygen uh, storage place. And uh, we have to reinforce the columns and we have to build something on the top and whatnot and whatnot. And, and uh, there were some suggestions which were there and uh, I got the plan last night and I sanctioned it, but I couldn't sleep because I knew something was wrong. And I'd given the best of the structural engineer to do it, the best the senior engineer from my side, my medical director and my CEO had all approved it. And I had sanctioned it and already the work had almost started. And something in the night told me that it's not okay. I went to the site, I looked at it, applied my common sense, changed everything because that thing could have actually ignited and caught fire and the plant downstairs could have been hurt. So what happens is you don't, you know, you have to be constantly thinking about things which happen to you and around it. But the best is to surround yourself with good and better people. The moment you have better and better people, rather, most of the teachers, principal leaders, surround themselves with what I call chamchas. So they're very happy to hear, good morning, sir. What a fantastic thing you did yesterday. Oh, my God. You know, you were on CNBC. Wow, what a speech. Well, some other one who's my design engineer will say, sir, you spoke extremely well. But you know, instead of this, if you had said this, uh, don't you think it would have been better? And, uh, you know, uh, I love that. Though I think people don't like to hear such things. So I would prefer to hear something like that and say, all right, can you improve? So next time, I know I can correct myself and do it. So, but people don't want to do it, especially politicians and leaders surround themselves with chamchas. And yes, men, even senior bureaucrats are bloody one, say what the boss wants to hear, even though it's all lies. And that is why our whole oxygen, vaccination, everything has gone wrong, not because the prime minister is bad, but when you have chamchas with you, who don't tell you the truth about the whole thing, then it's your mistake. You should surround yourself with people who are willing to tell you, sir, fantastic you did yesterday, but this is wrong, you know, in the same sentence. <laughs> so nobody wants to say that. So that's the problem which we have. So as leaders, whether you're teachers, whether you're a, a head of the department, whether you're principals, whether you're trustee, whether you're thing, you got to keep your ear open to criticism, to corrections, to improvements, and learning. Uh, and it's 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 a, this thing, you know. If I don't have one learning a day, uh, I, I I've missed uh, my life. I feel that it's been a waste of time, and it doesn't take too long to learn it. You go on YouTube, and uh, there are hundreds and things of that I can share with you. Maybe fifty of them just now in five minutes. So there's always something to learn, and once you do that. And the best part of uh, YouTube and artificial intelligence is that when you have heard 20 good mentors whom you have heard on YouTube, artificial intelligence of YouTube continues to give you good uh, learnings. It's surprising. And if you put yourself with shit and dirt uh, on YouTube, you will continue to get shit and dirt from YouTube. They're so intelligent. They give you exactly what you <laughs> ask for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That was brilliant. Your insights. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Kenneth. Manjushi, uh, you can unmute yourself. 
Hello, nice to see you, Manjushri, again. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good to see you all fit and healthy and back on track. Thank you. <laughs> you always are. So I'm not going to ask you a very long question, but I'm very intrigued to know from you. Uh, what would you uh, list down as your very unique leadership traits, which have made you, you know, uh, grow this empire from from absolutely nothing to you know an empire today and what is it that you believe are some of the most important qualities for people management because you're all about people management all these years that you have uh, put in into you know developing your work your empire it's all about people so so the first thing and foremost thing uh, manjushri is that i'm a learner if you ask me a question I will always introspect and understand okay, why did she ask me this question? And uh, I'll always have that thought as to why did Dada say so and so? Mm. Why did my colleague said so much? Why did my brother say this to me? Uh, why did my chief engineer not do this thing? So you introspect and learn from everybody. And the day you start accepting to learn, which requires humility, if you don't have the humility, you think you know it all. The secret is to be humble and a learner. If you incorporate these both those things, you can never ever go down in life. You may fall down, you may fail in something, but you, life will never be lost. Life will always be won. 19, uh, the, when I was 50, uh, close to 50, uh, we had put up two schools, one in Pawai and in Thane. But I wasn't into education in a big way. And uh, my father had three sons. My elder brother was a doctor and 10 years older to me. And I have a younger brother who was four and a half younger with me, who worked with me. My father uh, was very fond of me, but he always thought that my other two brothers would be more interested in doing not for business activity, because I was so much into business at that time that would Niranjan ever be into an NGO or a not for business activity? Never. So he would, he put my elder brother into it. And uh, my father was a very uh, taskmaster and uh, he was quickly dissatisfied, not because my brother didn't do anything, but because he expected too much from him. So, uh, so he, he actually lost out. So then he shifted not to me, second son, but he shifted to my younger brother. And he told him, these activities you look after. Uh, and why don't you get into schools, colleges and stuff like that and all these activities. Though I had built both the schools uh, over there and I had also, uh, no, I didn't build the hospital that time. The hospital came later. And he said, uh, you know, you take it up. And my brother did some work for the colleges, but he never got into it passionately. And one day he told me, um, Surendra is looking after this, but you know, this part of education, you also take some interest, but leave most of it to Surendra. So I said, yeah, of course, I'll leave it to Surendra and all that. He's better at it, but let me get into it. And I got into it with a flourish and passion. And uh, I, both of them lost out to me because I got into it like fish into water and I wouldn't leave it. And then of course I, also built a hospital in his name, a beautiful hospital in Pawai. I also built a second small hospital in Thane. And then I did some skill development. And then I became a trustee of three temples, including Babulna. And I continued all these not-for-profit activities into do it. I do a lot of skill development for last 10 years, much before Prime Minister uh, brought skill development into the whole thing. So, but I, but when I get into something, I do it with a passion. So whether it is building a school, building a hospital, uh, uh, skill development center, whatever you tell me, I do it with a passion. So if I have to love you, I will love you with a full passion, not half-heartedly. Okay. So, <laughs> but that's a problem also sometimes. But <laughs> so the difficulty is that whatever I take up, I want to do it passionately. I may not be the best. Uh, let me tell you, I could not be the best in 26 things that I do. Running a temple, I can't be the best. I have the 
I'm a, uh, I'm a trustee with Kokila Ben Ambani, uh, mother of Mukesh and Anil in Srinanchi Temple in Nathadwara. But I made a three lakh square feet building, which Mrs. Ambani told me I would never have been able to do, but for you, this would not have come up. So we, you know, but because we get into something, if you're passionate about something and you love what you want to do, uh, there's nothing in the world that you cannot do. And uh, you may not be the best. I'm not the best in temples, obviously. I'm not the best in hospitals, obviously. I'm not the best in schools, obviously. I'm not the best in colleges, obviously. I'm not the best in construction, obviously. Because there are so many people who are, uh, you know, inherited construction. They've been engineers. I'm a chartered accountant. So obviously, I won't know construction. But I promise you that I will know more simply because I'm a learner every day. So if you're a learner in something you do, which you are passionate about, the last one about people, I love and trust people. I'm a very trusting person. Wow. So there's a disadvantage. People also let you down. But the thing is, over a period of years, more people around, I keep surrounding myself with more people that I trust. So when a percentage of them ditch me, fail me, don't do it, it doesn't matter. Because I've already got now, I used to have four people I trusted, now I have 500 whom I trust. Obviously, 30% of them fail me. But 20% of 500 have excelled. Now, when you take, but if you trust one person, that's the problem. You have wife is one only. Okay. But I'm very fortunate. God gave me the best wife. So I don't have to worry about it. The most trustworthy thing I can do is got it there very closely. But in normal circumstances, uh, you know, you keep expanding your ambit of doing things. So even if you have failed in something, uh, the other people whom you have trusted and are good people around you, they have done so much. You get credit for what they have done. So my 14 colleges have done well. Bloody hell, do you think I have done everything in the 14 colleges? Obviously not. 45,000 students. Obviously they are talking good about my colleges. Do you think I have done all of it? Obviously not. But what happens is you continue to deliver what you want to do with a passion, with a commitment, with an ability to better, with an intent. For instance, my intent is I will never take one naya paisa from any of my NGOs. Even my hospital, my own hospital, I pay the bill. So if I'm doing that, then it's very clear in my mind that I keep my business on one side, which I earn a lot. And I have this, but I don't kind of mix up the two issues. And I learn to do that. So, but I trust people. My wife always tells me that you're a horrible person. You would, you would have been a much better person in your life if you had been more cautious and more careful about people. And I have made mistakes because I have over-trusted. And she's right. Women are always right. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly just say one thing. You know, when I hear him speak, so when I hear you speak, uh, I say that people who have that kind of level of passion that you have, you, you are mad about something. And it's the people who are mad are the ones who make a difference. And I would love to call you a mad person. <laughs> because you are making a huge amount of difference in the lives of people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manjushi. Thank you. Sir, your passion is infectious, actually. Yeah, truly. Yeah, so we'll take last question because it's almost 7.15. Uh, yeah, Mr. Jain, you would like to ask? Yes, yes. Uh, first of all, good evening, sir. I am feeling very motivated to hear you. I have just one question uh, about now we are into the lockdown, lockdown setup where the schools are closed and we are all into the online teaching. What do you feel is the future of online teaching? Because after six months, we are going back to offline school and uh, we have almost spent one and a half year on online teaching. Although in being in the metropolitan city, we have used online teaching, but across India, if you'll see, 
uh, it has not reached to the ground level to the students. So what do you feel is the future of online teaching and online education in India? I, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the COVID situation that uh, we have all got into being online. For example, I'm here now talking to you online. This would not have been possible and maybe some of us would have been too busy to actually meet. I have conferences online with uh, teachers and all that and conferences with, uh, I just did with Harvard, I did with uh, Rochester Institute of Technology, I did with the Penn State University last week. I am tying up with uh, all of them. I've been across the board discussing with them and uh, they want to do online with our teachers. We are going to do HSNC, Harvard online courses. We are going to do Rochester's Institute uh, online thing. Uh, the, all this is online is going to be the future. But is online going to be the only thing? The answer is no. So you're going to have online, offline both. And there will be a blended learning, which is going to be the one way to do it for the future. And we are going to have everything on the IT platform. So IT platforms are going to be done, whether it's recording of lectures, whether it's going to be teaching through other aids, IT aids, which are going to take place, which is going to be there. Uh, artificial intelligence is going to take place in a very big way into education. The pedagogies of education are going to completely change. So whatever was the methodology of education that you did yesterday, similarly to what Arti mentioned in terms of doing as a very special thing, there are lots more. What she's doing is fantastic and what more can be done is even more fantastic. So you will see a paradigm change in the methodologies because of technology. So we cannot write off online, but my belief is that a lot of education on the, in the classroom, in the interactive uh, thing with a physical presence which is going to be there will also continue to be there and institutions of excellence will run both so you will not have a you won't have b but it's going to be blended learning over a period of time which is going to be here to stay second you're talking about people who don't have access to uh, internet and other facilities which are there in the i type portion but the quality of education in the schools there are so miserable. It's only through IT and technology that we'll be able to raise the level and standard of education throughout the country. So where we have iconic schools, iconic education, I want, oh, I have insisted that in, to Dr. Mashalkar too, that every iconic college and institution must have four or five mentee colleges, schools, and education processes where they will teach for free to them or at least provide recorded courses which can be communicated and given to them. That's the only way to lift the bottom line of the thing. So let's not, let's use technology as a positive. Don't only think that uh, technology or online will be the answer, but it's certain. The last, if you want to have continuous learning and you want to learn and work also, Online is the way. So if I'm working in Nala Supara, I'm working in a factory, I'm working in some remote area, I'm working wherever it is, I reach home at 7, 7.38, I'm not able to reach institutions to do more education and learning. You will be on online working, learning. There is no other alternative to do so. So you will be doing it. So learning will become both, uh, what should I say, the pedagogies of uh, Learning will be online, offline, both, and technology platforms will be used by each and every one of us. There is no alternative. If you don't use technology, you will be out of date and out of the business of education within a year. So you got to start today in order to see that technology is used. And if you don't, I will use my colleges as mentor colleges and teach every other college in the country uh, free of cost. Uh, for the purposes of them learning and teaching on their day. And the best institutions that we have will be the teachers for the whole thing. Because there's no alternative. We have to learn to upgrade ourselves through technology. And that's the only way to do it. In fact, this is an opportunity. We should not lose that opportunity to teach the poorest of poor. Uh, I have uh, uh, two good schools which, are, which charges hell of a lot. 
uh, and uh, but I have five poor schools, six poor schools, uh, right from Opera House to Ulasnagar, and uh, some of them they pay four hundred rupees a month in terms of uh, fees, and uh, we run those type of schools also, and. Uh, you, you have to see the kind of upgrade that we have been able to do in terms of teaching learning now. It, it's astounding. And the, the upgrade in terms of returns to the, uh, the quality of students that have come out of the things. Now we are blending it with skill development into these schools. Because we find that most of them who come out are more interested to learn better skills rather than just uh, the normal education that we have been giving them. So. A lot of changes will take place and uh, blended learning is here to stay, period. Uh, okay. How much will be what, in which year and who will do it, who will be the leaders into that? Uh, I promise you, I don't know. Uh, it could be anybody and it could be some new people who are not there in the race today who would be able to uh, do that part of the whole thing. Or it could be the old players who are willing to change and improve themselves and adapt to new uh, this thing. You know, as somebody was telling me, the crow is the most adaptable bird. And that is why, even though the forest went away, they adapted themselves to live in the cities. The other birds disappeared because they could not adapt themselves to the city life of whatever it is. So if you don't want to be out of date as educationist, you have to adapt yourself to new technology and new things that we really need to do. And we have to do it very, very quickly. Uh, I've told my teachers and uh, principals and everybody, if you don't want to do uh, technology and all that, uh, don't do it. Uh, we'll appoint somebody else to do it. You, you can continue to be where you are. But I know for a fact, but now you'll be surprised all of them uh, are picking up uh, technology and uh, are going like fish to water to uh, doing it. Something which I will, am amazed how they have picked up. There's a lot of positivity about technology now amongst teachers. Yeah, yeah. their Thank willingness you, to willingness to adapt to new technology is more there because of the pandemic situation. It is there. You're forced to learn, and that is now becoming a habit which we are getting used to, and uh, we will succeed. But it's good because. Something new is coming out of it. Whenever, whenever you use a situation to turn uh, a, a bad into good, uh, that is what is important. Whatever wrong COVID has done to us, to our lives, which is horrible, I mean, I hate it. But this is one thing which is good, which has come out of COVID. So let's also relish at the end of the day after this bloody thing is over, uh, you know, enjoy the fact that we have got some fruits and benefits in the education field that we should use. But if you don't use it, you will be out of date and out of business of education. True. Yeah. I'm not Thank talking you, as individual. I'm not talking about any individual or person, but I'm talking about education as a whole, education as a uh, entirety in terms of continuing education, in terms of way that it is going to be done and uh, do it. And, and uh, you won't believe I, I conduct uh, three lectures a week simply because it's possible to do through, through this. I couldn't possibly go to Ulasnagar and then Bandra and this. And uh, I done IIT Kharagpur just now last uh, Sunday, I, not Sunday before last. I did IIT Kharagpur. I've done IIT Mumbai. Uh, I, I, I do lectures regularly. If it was not on the uh, 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 this thing intent on the net, I, I wouldn't have been able to do all of it. I may have done one out of these five, but uh, and you go on YouTube, you'll see all my lectures over there. So if you go to VJTI, I'm there. You go to various institutions, just type Niranjan Hiranandani, IIT, Niranjan Hiranandani, Kharagpur, Niranjan Hiranandani, VJTI. You'll, you'll see all my lectures over there. They have long lectures, you may get bored, but you can see five minutes of it. Sure. Thank you, sir. So it won't be boring because we just didn't realize the time is 7.30 now and we still want to hear from you. Is there any last question? I think we'll just take last question and then we'll close. Anybody would like to say something? Uh, any questions for sir? No. So Everybody wants to go for dinner now. 
<laughs> no, so before we close, uh, Sukada, can you please share a Thanksgiving card? So we can't give you anything personally, physically, because this is online. But this okay. is a small token of appreciation and gratitude from all of us, Women's Movement and Parisarasha. Thank you so much for your inspiring words and so much of learning, so much of learning. It's and this is our inaugural session for leadership because we had been conducting different different kinds of webinars. In fact, I don't know whether we shared with you or not. We were uh, running the entire series of Ask the Expert for Mental Health because we are running this toll-free mental health helpline uh, called as Positive Parenting and Child Helpline. Absolutely free. We have counselors, psychologists, doctors. In fact. Uh, many of these, uh, you know, uh, stalwarts from mental health, uh, they had joined our Ask the Expert, uh, Dr. Harish Shetty and Anjali Chabria and, you know, all these uh, well-known names. So we thought, ki, let's do something for leaders, our would-be leaders and our school leaders especially, so that uh, we can create some, you know, a better uh, positive uh, because we are hearing this word positive is very negative now, but I'm still using the word positive that we need to have more positivity amongst ourselves so that we can fight back to this virus and whatever is happening, you know, in the, the situation. So, sir, thank you so much. And it was really, really wonderful. And thanks to online, thanks to virus, actually, so that we could hear your uh, words of wisdom. And thank you, participants, for joining. And we will be sharing the YouTube link also. So thank you so much. Stay home, stay safe. Uh, good night. Uh, Ram sir, would you like to say something? So you will have to unmute yourself. Yes, unmute. I just wanted to say one thing to uh, Narendra sir. Sir, we have another series of parenting. We would like you to come there as a parent also. Because I'm sure you can contribute a lot to that space also. I've right. given up parenting because I failed <laughs> over there. My my wife is better at parenting, but I can do grandparenting. Maybe maybe you can. I'm very that. good with my grandchildren. <laughs> I'm not good at nice. parenting anymore. My wife tells me how much I've done wrong. I could have been a better father. I could have been a better this. I could have been better that. And, so why not share it? She, she, she will. She she can probably give a better lecture than I can mm -hmm. on parenting. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe both of if you. If you ask me for grandparenting, I can tell you a lot of things. <laughs> maybe both of you can come. So I'll tell you one story about grandparenting. Why I did grandparenting, and I'll yeah. close. Uh, <laughs> I decided last year that I want to sing Happy Birthday to my grandson on his birthday. And but to make it interesting, I, I have never played a musical instrument in my whole life. So last year, because there was a lockdown, I learned how to play a piano and I learned how to play a happy birthday on the piano. So <laughs> I, I, I got a small Casio and I played happy birthday to uh, Jahan, uh, my grandson, and it gave me as much pleasure as he did. And of course, he banged the whole thing also and played uh, <laughs> all the fun after that. But he was very happy to hear me not only sing happy birthday to him, but also play happy birthday in it. But I've never played a musical instrument ever in my life before age of 70. So that's how what grandparents are all about. You know, they're... <laughs> And I do somersaults with him also. Oh, so we somersault together. I can do somersault on the bed with him. And he somersaults also, much to the fear of his mother and certainly his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea. That's Let's a wonderful idea. Why for not? Grandparents, sir. Yes, why yeah. not? So grandparents, I can teach you a lot. No, but Actually, parenting, sir, I've lost out. I want to add something there. You know, our society is slowly losing the values it can learn from grandparents. Grandparents have a lot to teach because parents are always busy making their career and all. Grandparents have a little more time because you are very busy. But even then, you can spend time with grandchildren. That is really great. So I think we would like to have that session with you. Sometimes. No, no, that's not my forte. So just, <laughs> this is just to add a little fun in this <laughs> concluding remark. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank much. you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank evening. You, All the best. Keep safe.
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. <clears throat>